Good morning, fellow citizens of the household of God. This is Monday morning espresso shop. I pray that all will be able to receive a word from the Lord to give clarity, direction, as well as bless your lives. If you would, grab pen, paper, and Bibles and get ready for a powerful word from the Lord. We will open with a word of prayer and then jump right into today's discussion. Again, God bless you and thank you for joining us. We love all who come in and enjoy dining at God's table. This is not served by me, but this is served by God. So today, Monday morning espresso shot, we'll begin now with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We ask you for forgiveness of all sin. Sins of the mind, the body, and the spirit. God, even now, make us ready for your visit. Make us ready for your presence. Make us ready to hear your word on today. Let our hearts be receptive. Let our minds be full with change, ready to receive direction from you. Then, God, let our commitment be instated to go deeper and further in this journey with you. Father, we thank you for your word you've delivered on today. We invite you into this place for Monday morning espresso shot. God, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for being in the lives of all those who will hear, anoint their ears to hear God, and anoint my mouth that I may speak only what you've said. In Jesus' name we pray. All those who agree say amen. Work sanctuaries. Work sanctuaries. A sanctuary is a holy place, a church, good morning love, a place of refuge. Please understand, I've been here. I've been in the place where work was my sanctuary. Work was the place that I went to hide. Work was the place that I went to gather my thoughts. Work was the place that I went to get away from a, a life that was not uh, one that I was choosing to live at the time. Work was a place of escape. Work was my refuge. And I paid a great cost for that. That I could never get back. That cost paid was family, moments, memories and what I've learned is that if wherever you may work I don't care what you do and work does include you working in somebody else's business if it is a place that you go to that brings you a sense of accomplishment a sense of peace a sense of hiding this becomes a sanctuary and it becomes your God so you must be careful when you fall back into the habitual ways of things that God has delivered you from you have reinstated their authority in your life this is going somewhere so stay with me when you re-engage anything that God has disconnected from you you re-engage its authority to take over your life. And believe you me, it will take over your life. So when you put all your trust in work, that's how you pay your bills. That's how you get what you want. That's how you quote unquote provide for the family and give the family some lineage beyond your living. Listen, the only thing I can give to my family is a word from the Lord. That's it. And to me, that's greater than any material thing I could give them. If the word of God comes to you and tells you how to receive the Lord Jesus as your savior. That's greater than any amount of money you could make. You take truck, you, you, you take pride in your work. 
in your paycheck, how much you make, how often you get paid. Your work consumes you. Let me ask you this. In the consumption of work, where is there any time for God? Do you allow God into your heart, into your workplace in order to be God of even that? Because if he's God of your workplace, then there is no failure in God. None. When you allow work to become your refuge, this forces a wedge between you and God. Because now you've put trust in what you're able to physically do in life. Whatever the name of your work is, it becomes an idol God to you. Because that's where you get your paycheck from. But here's the problem. Do we not understand that it is God who gives us the ability to get wealth. So when you get these jobs and you become more and more well paid, it's God who gives you the ability to do that. So he's not the one that you need to set aside and devote all your time to work. Am I telling you not to go to work? No, because there's enough of y'all out there who don't go to work when you're supposed to and then wonder why you get in trouble. That's not what I'm saying. But when work consumes you and you take no thought to pray, you take no thought to trust God with the meeting of bills, with, with the meeting of ends that don't seem to be, with, with the canceling of inflation that worketh in your life. See, inflation works in everybody's life. But when you got God, it don't work in your life. Why? Because God is the maker of ends meeting. God is the one who brings things to pay. God is the one who's the provider. God is the one who takes care of us from day in to day out, month to month. God is. So when our trust lies in God. Now, let me, let me help you understand something about trust. Trust can also be correlated to faith. You know, that thing that moves mountains that belief system that causes you to have what has not come in manifestation yet, but you have it because you believe for it, that trust. Now, I won't take you to the word because only in your trust, your faith, your obedience to God can you obtain the very things that you work so hard to get. Go to Psalms 112, 1 through 3. Psalms 112, 1 through 3. Write it down, read it later, but I'm going to read it for you now. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. Verse 2, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse three, wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endureth forever. Not the wealth and the riches, the righteousness that he does endureth forever. So what impresses God? That which uh, goes on forever or the short term things that you enjoy in this life? See, forever means that when I get to God's place that he's prepared for me, the righteousness that I performed here speaks for me because it endures forever. That, my friend, is heavenly currency. That, my friend, gets the attention of God, your righteousness, not how much you make. Not how well you do your job, but your righteousness. 
Now, can there be righteousness in how you do your job? Absolutely. If you do your job unto God and you make sure God is glorified in your work ethic, That's how you get righteousness in your work. Because God is glorified in the ethics of which you operate in. How do you operate? Well, I do what I'm asked to do. I go to work when they ask me to. I show up on time. Uh, I, I, I fulfill the requirements of what they're asking. I go above and beyond. Because I'm working as unto God. Not unto them. And I need God to be impressed with what I'm doing. Not them. Now, will they be impressed if I'm impressing God? Absolutely. They ain't going to know how you get what you done, how you get done what you do in the short amount of time that you do it in. But that's when work sanctuary, when the workplace is not your sanctuary, it's just where you go to put in a little bit of time. After we understand that Psalms 112, 1 through 3 instructs us to fear, respect, and delight in the commands of God. This will allow us to enjoy for our participation wealth and riches. Even the children in our house will enjoy this. You struggle with many things trying to accomplish what God gives hassle-free through obedience. You struggle with many things for what God gives hassle-free through obedience. See, the equation, you can't leave that part out. You can't leave out obedience. You can't leave out commitment. You can't leave it. No, God gives you wealth and riches through your obedience. Through your not making work an idol God. The correct steps to wealth and riches with little to no struggle or sacrifice is only in God's direction. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So it's not just a one and done. It's not just a one time path instruction. It's paths. As long as you're traveling, God will direct you. But you got to trust him. You got to have faith. Why? Because that's the language God is speaking. You've got to speak God's language. You can't trust in man. You can't trust in, listen. He said in Psalms 118.8, Psalms 118.8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Why? That, then go to Psalms 146.3. Put not your trust in princes nor in the son of man in whom there is no help. That's why you trust in God and not man. The rest of it says his breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth. He came from dirt. He go back to dirt. In that very day, his thoughts perish. The day that he died, his book is closed. His deal is done. But you put all your trust in this job, in this man, in these men who run these jobs. In yourself to be able to. And when you lay down. Ain't nobody got up but Jesus. Now, there are some that Jesus got up. But he had to get them up. Ain't nobody took the power and authority in their own hand to raise up from the dead. Nobody. Many thought they could do it, but nobody did. Only Jesus. So you can't even put that trust in yourself. You must trust and depend on God. And how do you build on that trust? Go to Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. This is how you build on that trust. Not, not so much as allowing work to consume all of your time. Well, Bishop, the Bible says, man, don't work, you don't eat. You can run with that concept if you want to. 
but I've never seen skinny Christians. They all look fluffy. They all look well fed. Which means we ain't missing a meal. So you go on with that concept, man don't work, you don't eat. Yeah, we've been eating for a long time. Look, Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How do you build that trust? How do you build that faith? How, through the word of God. In your everyday work place, in your everyday work mindset, in your everyday... The word of God allows you the opportunity to build on what God gives you. Then once you start to build, you've got to understand to engage with God requires trust in God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Have faith in God with all your heart. Don't lean to the understanding that you walk in. Because you are misunderstood as well as misunderstanding a lot of things. Then he says in Hebrews 11 and 6, this is important because then this strikes down the fact that you've made work a sanctuary. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek it. Well, what is God? A way maker. An ends meter. A supplier of all we need. God of all. An unseen solution. That's who God is. But if you have put your trust and your faith in work, then faith must produce or try to produce what God has already established to take place in the earth. Work has to now try to duplicate that. You know, they got 3D printers now that if you give it a portrait or something of that nature, the diagnostic, they take a diagnostic of what you want and it'll print what you want. Well, look, heaven can't be 3D printed. You can't do that. No matter how much the enemy tells you, I can do what God do. No, he can't. Without struggle, without strain, God blesses us. He said, if you live righteously, if you obey, and if you commit, if you trust, if you have faith, wealth and riches are in your house. So if your house is without wealth and riches, where is your faith? Where is your understanding? Where is your commitment to God? Because you've worked your whole life and it hadn't provided for you that which you thought it would. Y'all know I'm not going to tell you to try. No, I don't want you to try him. I want you to devote your life to him. I want you to be in relationship with him. You don't need to try him as if you can try on a coat and take it off when you want to and put it back on. You can't do that. You must be in relationship. Then I'm going to take you all the way to Psalms 115, 4 through 8 to explain to you what has taken place in the lives of some believers. They've allowed work sanctuaries to take them over. Psalms 115, 4 through 8 says this, 4. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. Verse 7. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. What does that mean? You will never be able to accomplish the greatness that God has in store for your life that you feel, that you see, that you dream of without him. When you put all your faith and your trust in your sanctuary as your work, then the Bible says very clearly, Psalms 115 and 8 at the end, 
They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. And if he just explained to you them, the idols, that they're not able to do what he does, they can't see, they can't hear, they can't speak, they can't touch, then you become ineffective in your life. Sitting there spinning your wheels at work every single day, investing all of this time into work with no return. You feel as inadequate as you did when you started. Now what? Work has become a sanctuary. Work has become a God. Work has become something that it shouldn't. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your work. Trust in the Lord to make ends meet. Trust in the Lord to bring things to pass. Trust in the Lord to give you the provision needed to provide for you and your family. Trust in God. Faith has been replaced with work. As long as I can work, as long as I got breath in my body, I can work. I can provide, I can do, really? Your faith has been dampered and you've been disconnected from God because of work? Work sanctuaries. Work cannot do what God can. When you need healing, work can't do that. Yeah, but Bishop, if you got insurance, insurance can't do it. I'm gonna tell you that right now. You go to the doctor, sometimes you're going to walk away from the doctor with an unknown diagnosis because they don't know what's going on. Why? Because they're not God. But God never fails. God never misdiagnoses. He never misdiagnosed. He never missed that. He, he won't tell you you got something that you don't got. Now, if you're hearing something that you think eh, and, you can, and you're unclear, God is not the author of confusion. God won't be confusing. God will tell you straight out. And a lot of times what we deal with in our lives when work becomes our sanctuary, God is asking you and telling you, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. Will it be God or man? Will it be work or me? God will give you the unction to disconnect from work and to go be with him. And you will disregard that in order to remain at work. Why? When work has not answered, work has not given the solution, work has not done what it is supposed to. People of God, stand up in God. Trust in the Lord. Be one with God. Let God lead and guide your paths so that you may disconnect from the imprisonment of the sanctuary of works and come into the house of God and let God lead and guide your paths to take you to that greater place of wealth and riches. And wealth and riches include spiritual wealth and riches, physical wealth and riches, mental wealth and riches, Please do not just limit it to a dollar. It's greater than that because there are many who have many dollars, but no peace, no health, no mobility, no ability to affect those who are dying around them that they would love to help, but their money can't help them. But God is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So let him reward you with all the things that he has in store for you when he is in the rightful place as your sanctuary, your refuge, your holy place. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. For fellow citizens of the household of God, Monday morning is special shot. We love you. We thank you. Join us Wednesday night for Wednesday night Bible study. Same place at 7, at 6.30, not 7.30, I apologize. At 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, we will be in the book of Zechariah chapter 12, I believe. God bless you. We love you and we thank you. May the word of the Lord find its place in your heart. Be seated, rooted, and grounded, and that you may walk in the obedience thereof in Jesus' name. We love you and goodbye.